look, look what I got. Stick around, we'll have an unenveloping video. All right. What do we have here? SV Bonnie CLS filter. This is the clip in filter for the Canon cameras. I was looking at the two inch screw on type, but it was my birthday last week and this was actually given to me. So this is what we got. Pretty excited to try it out. Knowing my luck, all of the street lights have been upgraded to LED, so these really don't do anything for that, I heard, but I still have a lot of light pollution around my house and a lot of sky glow, so, so hopefully this will cut it out. So CLS filter, what does it do? This is a Spectrum. Um, this way is ultraviolet, this way is infrared. You can see this is what it allows. This here, this middle part is, and over here is where it cuts. So O3 lives in this area, HA and sulfur live in this area. Those are the light you want from an emission nebula. You don't want these. This is usually your um, sodium lights, street lights, stuff like that. So we're going to do a little experiment to see if this really works. Uh, it's just a clip in filter, so it just clips in to the inside of your camera instead of screwing on the outside. So this leaves um, more room for if you need another filter to put on before that. So. Okay. Okay, so my experiment I'm gonna do is that I'm going to shoot the same target twice. The target I'm gonna try is the Dumbbell Nebula. Dumbbell Nebula, or sometimes called the Apple Core Nebula. Its catalog names are M27 and NGC 6853. It's a planetary nebula, and that has absolutely nothing to do with planets. It comes from when people first started looking at the sky with telescopes. They saw these round, fuzzy things that looked like faded planets, and so they called them planetary nebula, and the name stuck, and that's stupid. It's an emission nebula, and that's created when a red giant star is at the end of its life and it sheds its outer shell, and the rest collapses into a white dwarf, and the radiation from the white dwarf ionizes the gases from the shell and causes them to fluoresce. It was discovered in 1764 by Charles Messier. It's in the Volpecula constellation, it's 1,360 light years away. It has a diameter of two light years. It's one of the brightest planetary nebulas in the sky. It has a magnitude of 7.5. That is all. I'm going to shoot the Dumbbell Nebula on two consecutive nights, one without the filter and one with the filter. I've chosen that nebula because one, I haven't ever imaged it before, and two, it's gonna be, gonna start in the east, be pretty high in the sky, stay away from all the trees, and, and it's a pretty bright object. I'm gonna try and get the same amount of data for both nights, so we can do a comparison between the two. Probably just 
process them really simply by running them through serial and doing a photometric color calibration and an auto stretch and then we'll see what the difference is see if this filter is worth it uh, also it's going to be a first for me i'm going to be doing a meridian flip for the first time so hopefully that all goes well we'll see um, let's go all right one night down uh, got 180 subs well, i still have to go through those to see which ones survive um, meridian flip did not go as planned i was watching the scope initiated the meridian flip scope moved a little bit and then just froze up uh, software said it was still trying but it wasn't doing anything so what i ended up doing was i stopped the sequence parked the scope let it wait for a couple of minutes well yeah just about a minute and then reinitiated the sequence and the scope moved centered slewed to the right place and continued on something i'm gonna have to work on all right well tidy up for today and we'll try again tonight Later. Hmm. Well, that can't be good. There's supposed to be mountains there. Okay, let's look at a couple of pictures here. All right, this is the one without the filter. Uh, both of these pictures will be 120 subs, uh, 60 second subs each. So that's about two hours worth of data on each one. They've been stacked in serial, photometric color calibration, background extraction, auto stretch, and then one level adjustment in GIMP on each one. I tried to do exactly the same thing on both pictures so we could see what the difference was. As I said, this is the without the filter. It looks pretty nice for two hours. And Here's the one with the filter. You can see right off the bat, there's pretty good green cast to it. Uh, all of this redness in the periphery. I'm not sure exactly what's causing this, but 
definitely some color balance issues. All right, let's take a close up of both the nebula on each one. Besides the fact of how horrible my mount, mount tracks at the Meridian, um, looking closer than both, and I don't know if YouTube will show this much, but on the one with the filter, you can actually see a bit more nebulosity. Things are brighter. Uh, and the stars look a little more subdued. So what do you guys think? I'm thinking I might have to go about processing them a little different with the filter. The green can probably be taken out with some color balancing. So I actually did do that. I shot another hour and a half worth of data with with the filter, stacked it in serial, did the photometric color calibration, background extraction, and I did the green noise filter on it too. But I didn't do any stretching in serial. I brought it into GIMP, stretched it, took a Neanderthal attempt at trying to do some star reduction, and I actually tried out the CLI version of Starnet++ for Mac. I'll show you what that picture looks like here in a second. Uh, like I say, it's my first attempt at it, all of that, so don't laugh. It'll make me feel bad. And before I show you the picture, um, give me a like on the video maybe. Let me know in the comments what you think of the picture. And as always, Remember, clouds suck, and I'll talk to you later.